I actually played quite a bit of Overwatch 1 when it first came out. I think it came out in the summer and I'm a teacher, so I played a lot of that. At least I remember it coming out in the summer. I remember playing a lot of Overwatch 1, but just the first couple of seasons and I kind of drifted away. By the way, if you hear a bunch of banging noises and such, I'm in the basement filming a video while my kids play. Uh, upstairs. <laughs> now, um, anyway, so what do we have here? Well, the Overwatch 2 closed beta has been announced along with some system requirements and other information about the beta. My channel's more about PC hardware system requirements and all that, so I'm not gonna talk too much about the actual gameplay here, but I thought I'd have this slide behind me so you can get a bit of a look at that. If you're searching for this content, you might be more interested in the actual Overwatch info. Now, what are the system requirements? Boom, I made myself disappear. I meant to make the background disappear. There we go. <laughs> all right, here are the system requirements. And what I wanna stress here is first of all, these are the system requirements for the closed beta. So these could definitely change by the time the game actually launches. And if they do, I might do an updated system requirements video. Also, I'd like to compare these to the Overwatch 1 system requirements, which I've pulled up right here, because some things about them are very similar, but some things have definitely been changed. And then I'll also pull up this Tech Power Up Relative Performance Guide to help you figure out how your GPU might fit into this situation. So let's go ahead and dive right in. The first thing I notice is that the requirements compared to just games in general are quite low. And I think that's normal for a more esports style title where they wanna keep the frame rates high and a lot of people able to get into the game. Um, so the memory, so that's your system memory, not your VRAM, your system memory, so your RAM, uh, are only six gigabytes for the minimum and eight gigabytes for the recommended. A lot of games nowadays are eight gigabytes for the minimum and even up to like 16 for the recommended. So this is lower than we normally see. Although if we compare that to Overwatch 1, which I'm gonna be doing back and forth as we check things. So in Overwatch 1, we saw four gigabyte minimum and six gigabyte recommended. So basically the recommended from Overwatch 1 has become the minimum for Overwatch 2. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is what frame rate will these settings get you? They're saying that these minimums are targeting 30 FPS, but that's all they say. They don't give us any settings or, or resolutions. Now, the recommended are actually telling us this is targeting 60 FPS on medium settings, but it doesn't tell us a resolution. Now, generally, 1080p is considered to be kind of the default PC gaming resolution. So I would go out on a limb and say, this is probably for 1080p. It wouldn't really make sense for it to be something else. Although guys at Blizzard, how much more work would it have been to type 1080p? Right, right, right after here, right after where it says targeting and right before it says 60 FPS, you could have just typed, typed in 1080p. That wouldn't have been that hard, would it? And if you don't mean 1080p, you could have typed in something else. Just saying that. Anyway, <laughs> at least they are giving us some sort of frame rate target and settings because a lot of system requirements lists don't even have that. Anyway, let's jump into the processors. So the minimum is an Intel Core i3, no particular generation stated, so I would assume going back to the oldest i3, and an AMD Phenom X3 8650. So basically really low. And here's the interesting thing, when we pull up the Overwatch 1 system requirements list, I think this is actually a match. So the processors on, for the minimums on Overwatch 1 are an Intel i3 or AMD Phenom X3 8650. So basically they have kept the minimums. Now, my understanding is there will be some kind of cross play between Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2. Although again, I'm not super into Overwatch these days, haven't thought about it in years. So I could be wrong about that, but I think that's what I've heard, which might then make sense why you would need at least on the CPU side of things uh, to have the minimums stay the same. Now, the recommended processors jump up to an Intel Core i7 specific model completely unstated, 
or AMD Ryzen 5. So I'm just gonna say, I can't really tell you much about that because there's a huge difference between an i7 from five generations ago and one that just came out now. And you know, the same thing, a Ryzen 5 5600X or Ryzen 5 1600 question mark, they're not telling us. So let's just say, if an ancient CPU can run this thing, I think you're gonna be just fine with any sort of modern CPU, would be my guess, <laughs> okay? Um, seems like they're going pretty lightweight on the CPU requirements. Now, the last thing we wanna look at, well, I guess I could mention storage. You need 50 gigabytes of, and they specifically say hard drive space. You're not gonna need an SSD or anything, but get an SSD if you don't have one, guys. Just do it. Anyway, uh, video cards. So the minimums are really unspecific. They're just going GeForce GTX 600 series or AMD Radeon HD 7000 series. And if you're like, Radeon 7000 series, those don't even come out until the end of the year and that's the minimum? No, this is the HD, not the RX. So we're talking the old 7000 series, which should give you an idea of just how low these minimum GPU requirements are. And they're also not specifying specific GPUs, so I'm not gonna talk much about that other than my heater just came on if you feel like it got even noisier in the background. Sorry, guys. Again, this is a hobby. Uh, channel's just a hobby, guys. Uh, we're not, uh, we do things in one take with no editing much of the time. <laughs> now, what I'm bringing up here is that these are actually higher than the minimum requirements on the old game, which went all the way down to a 400 series NVIDIA card and a HD 4000 series Radeon card, and even some Intel HD 4400 graphics. But the old Overwatch 1 recommended specifications did include a GTX 660 or a HD 7950. So these aren't the lowest 600 series or HD 7000 series GPUs for the recommended on Overwatch one, but I'm gonna kind of interpret this as them saying that if you, if you have the recommended setup for Overwatch one, you should be at least able to play Overwatch two at at least 30 FPS at 1080p question mark? Uh, wouldn't surprise me though if these minimums, if they're only shooting at 1080p, sorry, only at 30 FPS, could even be rendering below 1080p. Now, um, the GPU to actually get you a good 60 FPS, probably 1080p medium, <laughs> okay, uh, is a GTX 1060, which I like to see because that is, according to the Steam hardware survey, still the most popular GPU in the world. And in AMD R9 380. Now what's weird to me here is that these two GPUs are not comparable performance wise. So I don't really know why they're listing these two together. Now having the R9 380 saying that they're saying this should be able to get you 60 FPS at some sort of resolution, probably 1080p, is nice because the R9 380 is not super powerful. Now the 1060 is a much steeper bar, but I'm gonna assume that the 1060 is gonna do a lot better than 60 FPS if they're saying that R9 380 can get you 60 FPS. Here's where we'll pull up the relative GPU chart. So they're saying that an R9 380, now again, this is uh, at techpowerup.com and they have this relative performance chart. This is based on their GPU reviews and they put all of them in this relative performance chart. But keep in mind that the older ones and the newer ones weren't necessarily benchmarked exactly the same way. So there's some hand waviness here. This is not perfect. Every game performs differently. But I have found this to be the most accurate and complete list like this that I've been able to find. So it does give us a pretty good ballpark idea. So I'll just say that. Anyway, so the R9 380, if we set that as our baseline, that means if you have a GTX 960, you have very similar performance to that. And, and the 960 was a fairly popular GPU. A lot of people still hanging on to that. If you have a GTX 1050, you're actually a little bit below that 60 FPS medium recommendation. And then you dro start dropping down into these, you know, 600 series and HD 7000 series cards along with like a GTX 950 when you get below this, okay? Now, as you start coming up, we're seeing cards like the 1050 Ti, again, on a very similar performance tier to the R9 380. And then we start uh, coming up even more powerful here, like your GTX 780 is about 27% more powerful. You got your 1650 is about 30% more powerful. 
You got your R9 390 at 50% more powerful, your 970 is 50% more powerful, but here's the interesting thing as we scroll up here, here's the 1060 six gigabyte. Now granted the six gigabyte version is about 10% more powerful than the three gigabyte version plus the VRAM issue. Um, but this is what I'm saying is weird to me. The R9 380 and the 1060 six gigabyte, the 1066 gigabyte being 68% more powerful, this is kind of strange for them to have put these at the same tier. So I'm just gonna throw that out there as a big question mark on why they did that. Anyway, as you go past this point, like I think you're just golden. Like turn up the graphics settings or pump up the frame rate if you're on a high refresh rate monitor, all of that. Your 1650 Super, by the way, is more powerful than the 1060 if you're wondering, if you got a 1660. So again, if we set like the 1060 as the baseline here, we can now kind of scroll up and see, see how you perform to those, right? So you're a bit more powerful if you have a 1660. It's close, but more powerful. 1660 Super is like 32% more powerful and all of that. And as you scroll down here, you just shouldn't have any issues. You should just be crushing this game uh, as far as I can tell. All right, that's it, guys. Now, they do have an FAQ here about the closed beta and how to sign up, so you can definitely sign up on uh, on here. And I actually did sign up for the closed beta. They're saying they're not necessarily gonna take everybody. It begins on April 26th, 2022. Now, if I get accepted to the closed beta and assuming there's no like NDA agreement that goes along with it or anything, I will benchmark it on my GTX 1060 and see what sort of performance it actually gets. And if I have time, all my other GPUs, um, which would be interesting and they should crush it if the 1060 can play it anyway. <laughs> I hope all of you have an excellent day.